Hi, everybody. This is a little different talk. I'm not going to talk about packets. I'm not going to talk about deep diving inside the DPK. This is a completely different kind of talk. So don't see if I can. Which one? Green. green. Big green. First off, a little disclaimer. This is not a Microsoft talk. This is not the DBDK tab. These are my opinions, mine alone. And don't take this as a negative that the eco DBDK ecosystem has problems. It's healthy, it's well, we have lots of really good projects. And also, if I pick on your feature, I'm not picking on you, and I'm not even picking on that feature. I'm trying to use it as an example. So what I did was I started out this little investigation. And I started because I'd done a driver for DPDK on Azure. And this driver only had a limited set of functionality. And my question was, is this enough? Which features do I need to add? Which projects need the features that I don't have? And what can I do about it? So to start that effort, I went and inventoried the projects I could find on GitHub and related sites. So I in found about 30 projects, and now I added NDPI, so it's 31 projects, and downloaded the source for them. And then I used some scripts to take that data and compute a coverage map. And the way I did it was I started off with the DBDK sources nicely organized and laid out in libraries. And each of those libraries has a version map which says which symbols it exports. And then cross product that with all those open source software sources and came up with a nice big spreadsheet that says OVS uses the MBUF library. And this other library isn't used by anybody. And what came out of that, uh, the tools are on the link at the end, is when you look at the library usage by projects, only a small slice of the DBDK is used by 75% of the projects. And in fact, a majority of the software libraries are not used by less than 5% of the DBDK. It's kind of shocking, but... Then I said, well, maybe if I looked at it a little differently, and I said, break down by how big is each of those libraries, by how much it's, they're used, and it comes out to about equal thirds. And I did another thing this morning to break it down even finer. Basically, you'll discover across every library is pretty much used by equal amounts. I mean, so that led to the simple thing. There were four libraries that were the most used libraries in GPDK. Can you guess the four libraries? The first one is, first one is the EAL. Everybody has to use EAL. Even SPD, SPDK uses EAL. The second one was EastDev. Surprisingly, 90, there was 97% use EastDev. Third was MBuff. There are people that aren't using MBuffs directly. They're using libraries that use MBuffs. So that's, and the fourth one is the mempool. Everything else is in the medium. So lots of applications never even look at statistics, for example. To go back to my original question was, I wanted to look at my ETHDEV. And this one I couldn't quite as automate, but it broke down to, there's a very small slice of ETHDEV that everybody uses. Start, stop, send, receive packets. Um, and there's a whole range of projects that just use statistics and things like that. And there, there's a very large percentage of the ETHDEV stuff which has been implemented in DBDK, but not used by anybody. Um, is this a problem? 
Do we have a lot of rotting fruit out there? Well, to my mind, it's not so much a problem as the fact that everything varies in its coverage. So if you're a core developer, you know which libraries are battle-tested. I can build my product, and everybody's using them. If the other the converse is true, there may be ones that are corner cases that maybe there's only one way to exercise them with test PMD, and nobody's ever tested them in the real world. And I think that is a bit of a problem. And, why, and it's going to get worse. Um, I did a graph of this is the size of DPDK in terms of lines of code and number of files. And you know we're nicely business-wise growing up into the left. I don't know what the huge drop is, by the way. I think that's when we dropped like some arch or something, but I wasn't going to go. Somebody wants to figure it out. Uh, OK. So when I discovered this, I said, well, why is this true? I think a lot of the users of DPK software are proprietary. And the problem is they're dead. We can't know their usage case without going getting the community to sign NDAs with people and get the source code in. So it's hard to get the dialogue going. The other one is we have this NFV field of dreams. And I'm not discouraging this because we're in the auto place. You know what did Henry Ford said? If I listened to what my customers asked for, I would have made a faster horse. Um, we, we do need innovation. We do need to think of new things. We do need to push the envelope. But sometimes that doesn't work out. Um, when we build it, they don't often come. The other one is I sometimes think that what we're building, we build it, and then the feedback doesn't happen that the needs are met to match the use case of the customers. Um, this slide has been a problem all along. Anyway, this was uh, the other one is uh, some of the libraries we built are one off use cases. So they either only work with special hardware, they only work on Linux, or uh, you, know, you have to have the flavor of the month to make it work. And why did I get to this? Cut me off with seven minutes. Hello. He's going back. Did I crash? Don't tell me I trashed Office. So how does Microsoft deal with code? No, we don't embrace, extend, extinguish. We, that was the old strategy. The new strategy I think we ought to think about is look at the code, first off, and evaluate how well the DBK libraries match the application needs. So if we have an LPM library and none of, the, uh, none of the projects are using it to do LPM, let's go see what the gap is and why. Um, the exile thing is some of this, the libraries that are very specific to a particular project or a particular hardware maybe either need to be not in the DPDK core code or their own project standalone or part of the, the project that uses them. And there are some low-hanging dead fruit, I think I found, where pro things, there were features that nobody uses. And and lastly, I think we need to figure out a way to, here to embrace and identify code which is the most used and some which is the least used. Thomas has already done this with the experimental flag. Maybe we need to have a, more of a uh, um, something in the middle that's not experimental, but you know, tell us if you're using it kind of thing. Um, on the marketing side, I think we could do a lot to try to up the usage of the DPDK libraries, which is to talk to these, some of these major projects and say, could you use this to, to provide your functionality? Or could, do you have something that we could bring into DPDK to get wider usage? Um, on the exposed side, I think that some of the proprietary vendors could get the channel going to feedback um, I used the example earlier, which is when I was in the database world, Oracle had a demo application that was basically, this is how Oracle does I.O. 
it wasn't an Oracle database, but it was doing I.O. from the huge pages. It was having the same number of threads, and you could get an I.O. load based on a certain TPM level of database benchmark. If there are proprietary applications that are major and have performance needs, if we could and use certain functionality, if we could get demos brought back in, the last thing, it, examples help a lot. I mean, I don't know how many DPDK applications have built as forks from L3 forward. Um, if a lot of those functionality could have a richer application suite so users would know how to do it, I think it would help a lot. Um, so my conclusion here is DPDK is not a special pro project with a lot of problems. It kind of fits the 80-20 model, which is 20% uh, of the code is used by 80% of the people, <laughs> and 80% of the code is used by 20% of the people. Um, it's not a huge problem, but it's something we all continue as, as a community have to keep our eye on and keep our... And uh, is the glass half full or half empty? I don't know. Um, the scripts to do this, I put them up on GitHub, and you can run them at... There's no magic sauce here, and all the projects total come out to be about three gigs, so you can do it on your laptop. It's not impossibly difficult. And I'm perfectly willing to take contributions, and I'd love to get more cooperation on this. Thank you. So I've got a few minutes left intentionally for questions, and then I'll bring the next person up. Um, we're not using DVDK enough in an open source way yet. We're providing it for customers, but not, I mean, basically our contributions are back at dbdk.org at this point. Uh, next speaker is uh, Jeremy from UNH. He's going to talk about uh, Community Lab.